The train now approaching platform 2 is for Ikebukuro and Shinjuku. For your safety, please stand behind the yellow line. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel where today I am going to be introducing you to what will hopefully become a new series which is called Walk With Me. And basically what it is is where I will be taking you along on walks in Tokyo, in Japan, and I will be showing you the scenes, the actual scenes, the actual locations from um, Japanese literature. And so today I wanted to start off with Tokyo Wendell Station by Yu Miri and translated by Morgan Giles. And I wanted to start off with this one because the setting of this book, Wendell Station, Wendell Park in Tokyo, is so pivotal to this novel and Yu Miri really just gives you every little detail about the park in this book that I thought it would be perfect for the first of the series. And bonus, um, this book was just um, two weeks ago given the award for best translated fiction with the US National Book Award. Funny enough, this book didn't actually get much attention in Japan. Um, a lot of these books, when they're translated to English, they're, they're often slapped with the title of, you know, best Japanese sensation, new Japanese author that is the Japanese literary darling. And I always look at those verbs and I'm like, who's saying that? Because... I don't know anyone who's saying that. <laughs> um, it's like here in Japan, most people are either reading self-help books or, or like um, keigo higashi no like mystery thriller books. No, no one's reading this. Um, even myself, I was originally, when this book came out in English, I was originally thinking I would read it in Japanese and I could not find a single bookstore that was carrying this book in Japanese. It was just impossible to find. No one was reading it. And so, well, actually, I'm actually quite glad that I did up reading the English translation just because it would have actually been a very difficult read in Japanese, so it was good. And the translation was very much worthy of winning that award. It is fantastically translated. It's perfectly well done. Um, but yeah, I mean, now that it's won the award, it's gotten some press in Japan, so maybe it'll start showing up on the shelves. But even the bookstore within the Tokyo Wendell Station didn't have this, so... I can tell you, this is definitely like a literary darling from the English language side. But in any case, what is this book about? Um, basically, it follows our narrator who is deceased and he was homeless in Tokyo Winnow Station Park. Um, Winnow Park back in the day, so when I was 13 years old or so, um, used to have a huge homeless po um, problem where all the homeless were gathering in this park because there's, there are a lot of trees, there's a lot of covering, and they would use the blue tarps that people would leave behind from cherry blossom viewing to use as like sort of like the walls of their tents because they're waterproof and they're very large sheets. So back in the day, it was a very big, there was a very big con conglomeration of um, homeless people. And Japan, and particularly the Tokyo government, has fought against this for, had fought against this for a very, very long time. Why? Because Tokyo and Japan wanted to create this image of itself of being this rich, um, powerful nation that's thriving and doing really well, and it wanted to show you how impeccable of a country it was. And this book is basically a criticism of that. It, it criticizes Japan's, uh, or rather Tokyo's, management of the homeless population in Winnow Park to sort of create this illusion of a perfect Japan. And it, 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 it juxtaposes the beauty of the park versus the uncleanliness of the park. It sort of shows the hypocrisy behind the um, Japanese history when it comes to this park. It also is a very has a very melancholic view about 
sort of how the homeless were treated in very um, numerous aspects. So for example, there are a lot of um, very famous museums in um, in this park and the emperor and empress, the, the imperial family, it's very common for them to come into this park and visit these exhibitions or to do something ceremonial um, within the park because this park kind of did belong to the imperial family back in the day. And when that would happen, the Tokyo government, the bureaucracy, they would come in and they would evict all the homeless, pe all the homeless people and tell them to leave and they weren't allowed to come back until the imperial family had left. And so it sort of shows you that that class difference between this very, you know, elite, untouchable imperial family and these homeless people who are just uh, left and told, you know, we need you to make things pretty. Can you leave? Um, it also shows sort of the, the, the final um, push to kick out the homeless when the Olympics was bidding for the Olympics um, and how... Japan has been really trying to become a country that is the biggest tourist hub. I mean, the the number of tourists in Japan, I mean, now not so much because of Corona, but before Corona hit, um, the, the tourists in Japan was mind-boggling. I mean, when you compare Japan now to when I first came when I was age 13 to even in 2004 when I did my study abroad I mean it is staggering the difference in terms of the, the volume of tourists But yeah, Japan has been catering to tourists and it's been wanting to create this cool Japan and a clean Japan and a Japan that doesn't have any societal issues, you know, the Japan that everyone wants to be like It wants to be every country's idol basically and so they've made a huge effort to clean up um, certain aspects of Japan, whether that be Kabukicho or the homeless in Wino Park, Miyashita Goen and Shibuya. So it's this book really, really delves into that topic quite marvelously. I think my only complaint was personally, I didn't feel very emotionally connected to it. I was kind of left a little cold with this book. Um, the translation was fantastic. The topic is wonderful. But for some reason, I just... There was just something about this, the actual reading experience where I was just like, okay. But like, it's kind of like one of those books where the message is more important than the book itself in terms of my enjoyment of it. And there's also one aspect that sort of involves the Fukushima incident um, that I didn't think was necessary for this book. I understand it's very necessary from the author who is from Fukushima and maybe needs to sort of spill out those emotions about the tsunami event. Um, I understand that, but I didn't think it, it belonged in this book, which was about homelessness in Wino Station. But those were my only complaints, and that's definitely something that um, might not affect you as a reader. But yeah, in any case, um, the rest of this video is me strolling through Ueno Park and taking you through the different passages of this book. And I had so much fun filming this. I think it really, really added to my enjoyment of the book, to my appreciation of the book, more than when I had originally read it. So I really hope you enjoy the rest of this video and enjoy the journey that I take you through, the journey that the book takes you through because if you enjoy this, I definitely have lots of ideas for future videos in the series. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again at the end of the video. Today is Monday. The zoo is closed. I never took my children to Ueno Zoo. I came to work in Tokyo at the end of 1963. Yoko was five then, and Koichi was just three. The pandas came to Ueno Zoo nine years later. The kids were both in middle school by then, past the age when they would want to go to the zoo.
a young man with a shaved head wearing a white running top and black leggings with bright red running shoes. He crossed Tianyu Bridge, then stopped in front of the water basin at the entrance to the shrine. Taking the dipper in his right hand, he scooped water from the engraved stone basin and cleans his left hand, then changed hands to cleanse his right, finally washing his mouth. The young man took a 1,000 yen note out of his waist pouch and brought an enma at the shrine's office, then wrote a wish on the wooden tablet in black marker ink and hung it up with the others. Thank you, God. I finished the marathon. Please continue to look after me. He wiped the sweat pouring from his face away with the towel slung around his neck and read some of the wishes written on other people's enma. Please give me guidance on how to get lots of students in my English classes. May we grow closer and be happy together. Let us always be there for each other. In thanks for my lottery win. May my family be healthy and safe. Let the occult swallows win this year, at least. It was the 12th of November, the fifth eviction in a month. There were lots of museums in and around Ueno Park, and members of the Imperial family often paid visits to exhibitions and events there. The path of their vehicles took them past the Masaoka Shiki Memorial Field, but the reason that we were forced to remove our huts from areas not even visible from the road was likely a scheme dreamed up by the Tokyo city government. The intent was to force out the 500 homeless living in Ueno Park in order to win their bid for the Olympics. The yellow of the ginkgo leaves poured into my eyes like paint dissolving into water. Each leaf had a golden glow that was almost too beautiful. The ones that danced in the air, the soggy ones trampled on by people, and the ones that still clung to their branches. <laughs> 